What's up everybody, it's your boy Nate. Today we are diving into Framepack, which is a brand new AI video generation tool that allows you to generate extremely awesome looking videos at full 30 frames per second. It can run on laptops. And the best part is that it is completely free and there is a one-click installer for you guys to get up and running. So we're gonna be diving in how you guys can get frame pack and what to expect. We're also gonna address some of the caveats. That way you guys can make an informed decision as to whether or not this is gonna be helpful to you. But spoiler alert, this thing is probably the biggest advancement when it comes to local open source AI video generation. I'm super excited. I know you are too. All right, let's go. First off, we got to give a huge shout out to Lumen Zhang and Manish Agrawala. I'm sorry if I'm butchering you guys' names. If you guys are curious how this works, there's a really awesome write-up that they put together and it pretty much explains it all, which I'm not going to dive into too deep because I think for most of us, we want to get up and running as quickly as possible. But if you guys were curious on the architecture of this and how it really works, and the genius behind it. It's such a simple and elegant solution. Let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the examples that they showcase, which by the way, all the results were computed using an RTX 3060, six gigabytes laptop with the 13B Hunyuan variant. And yeah, this is freaking amazing because this is previously not possible to do at all before. So if you guys can take a look here on the left-hand side, we have the input image. And on the right hand side, we have the generated videos and all of these look extremely smooth, really awesome. And it's just mind boggling to imagine that this was all generated on a laptop. Huge, huge progress in this domain. If you guys want to be able to see some of their examples, they gave a really awesome set of examples. Most of these first ones are just going to be image to five second generations, but they're running at 30 frames per second, which is a lot more than some of the other video models that we've talked about before which typically render things in about 16 frames per second. So that's why we're getting these extremely smooth videos. But if you scroll down even further, this is another crazy aspect of this, which is that using the same GPU and the same model, we're also able to get 60 second video generations at 30 frames per second, equaling 1800 frames, which I don't even think Kling allows you to generate videos at 60 seconds. And most paid tools don't even allow you to do this as well. And yet here we are with 60 second generations and all of these are looking amazing. So yeah, you guys can go ahead and take a look at that. We're also going to be uploading a couple examples up on our Patreon as well for you guys to check out. Of course, all those links are going to be down in that description box. But let's get into how you guys can actually install this and get this running on your computer. So the first thing that you guys want to do is go to the Ilias Veal Frame Pack GitHub page. Again, this is a completely free to use tool. You guys don't need to pay any money whatsoever to get this. So don't be confused if you see something else online. This is the official implementation and where you guys can get it completely for free. Here, you're going to see the write-ups, the links to the papers, but you want to go all the way down here. And depending on your system, if you're running Linux, you can go ahead and install it this way. But I think most people are going to be using Windows computers like I am. And all you have to do is actually download this one-click package and you're going to see that it downloads it right here using this 7-zip file. So once you hit save, the next thing that you're going to get is this 1.68 gigabyte file. And once you have that file, you're going to want to right click on it and extract that file to its folder. And you're going to see here, I've already extracted it. And this is what it's going to look like. Frame pack CU 12.6 Torch 26, which I believe is the CUDA version and the Torch versions included here. And then you're going to want to double click on that. The next step to do before you hit run is that you want to double click on update.bat, which is going to make sure that you're getting the absolute latest version. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and run update.bat. My version already says already up to date, but when I first ran this, it gave a couple messages showing that it was not up to date yet. So make sure you guys do that. And then the next step, super simple. You guys just click run.bat and then you're going to see a command prompt window pop up and it's going to take probably a couple seconds to initialize. But a huge note when you're first running this is that you want to make sure that you have enough space on whatever hard drive it is that you have this folder because it's going to start to download all of the models needed to actually run this. And all those files come up to about 30 gigabytes or so. So I'm using an external hard drive for this, but whatever you guys are using, just make sure you have more than enough space because wherever you've extracted this and ran the update and the run.bat is where it's going to start to actually install all those files 
and download them. This folder is actually already 39.9 gigabytes. So yeah, make sure you have ample space. 30 gigs might be actually too little. You might want a little bit more than that. So here we have it now running. Now, another thing as a little tip, sometimes you might see things hang inside of your command prompt. So if you ever run into something similar, a little trick I like to do is just press enter while I'm inside of the command prompt. And that tends to help Windows refocus it. And bam, we have the UI for frame pack, which super simple and super easy to understand. I already love how they made this. Reads from left to right, which is extremely smart. So on the left-hand top corner is where you're gonna wanna upload your image. And in this instance, let's go ahead and I'm gonna upload this image of a Dior bottle, which funny enough was a generated picture by using one of our previous workflows. So we made recently a Flux Uno workflow, which allows you to take an input image like this one on the left-hand side and make whatever scene that you want on the right hand side so here we have this perfume bottle in the snow and i think it looks pretty believable and it kept a lot of its shape another cool thing about this is that it does not require any laura training so if you guys are curious on how to generate your own pictures that would probably work really well for frame pack of real world objects or different things that you may have seen and wanted to use as a reference we're also going to have a link down below for that as well so here I'm gonna have the prompt. Let's have the camera rotates around a bottle in the snow. Okay, and then afterwards, the main settings that you're gonna wanna pay attention to is either using Tcache and how long your total video length is gonna be. So Tcache helps speed up the generations, but it often makes some of the generations slightly worse, specifically for the hands and fingers. And then another thing about this is that your video length by default is gonna be set to five seconds, which I think is already gonna be pretty great for most shots. But if you really wanted to crank this up, I was actually able to get a full two minute video by making this 120 seconds, which is just unbelievable. And it's really crazy to imagine that not so long ago, stuff like this was completely impossible and really out of reach for most people. And then the rest of the settings, the steps, the distilled CFG scale, and all these other values as well, like GPU inference, preserved memory, and MP4 compression, you actually don't really need to touch. And it's also for two of these steps, they say that it's not really recommended for you to change these. Another thing that you might wanna mess around with might be the seed. If you guys were just trying out different generations multiple times, you can just change the seed manually yourself to make sure that you're not generating the same exact video every time. So here I'm gonna go ahead and hit start generation. Okay, so here we have a finished two second generation. Now I ended up ending the generation a little bit earlier than the five seconds because after seeing two seconds, I already thought this was looking amazing. And as you guys can tell, it followed the prompt exactly. It showed the camera rotating around the bottle in the snow and I think it looks really awesome. Now, if you guys are curious where your generations get saved, you can either go ahead and download your generation by clicking that button and hitting save. Or if you navigate over to the folder where you installed frame pack, you're also gonna see this folder right here that says outputs. And here you can see all of your generations as well as those input frames that you use to generate the videos. So here I can actually scroll all the way down and show you this very last one right here, which is gonna have that video nice and saved out for us with the proper MP4 compression settings. Now, if you guys wanted to see some other examples, I'm also gonna be uploading this up on the Patreon because uh, just showing you a full one minute and 20 second video is probably gonna be a little bit boring, but here we had an example in which we're able to generate these two Lego characters of Chrisella and I dancing in the street. And I think these uh, ended up looking pretty awesome. Yeah, as you can also see here, we have a bunch of files which all lead up to that final generation at the end. Another example that I really loved messing around with and testing out was using a frame from Final Fantasy X. And here we have Titus walking in the water. And this is a full eight second generation. And I think this one came out looking pretty awesome and really great for just what I gave it. And then another example of a longer 11 second generation is Chriselle and I posing, wearing these uh, mid-century modern inspired outfits. Here we have some other examples as well which I thought these ones ended up coming out really great and really awesome, especially this one here where we have this model posing for this Starbucks shirt, which again, if you guys were curious on how we were able to generate some images that we can use for frame pack, 
you can pretty much make these images wherever you want, but I was using Flux Uno, which is a really awesome AI model that allows you to take one input reference image and generate a pretty convincing looking in context scene with them. So here I used a picture of a Game Boy Color and we're able to make it look like it's laying on leaves. And we also have some other examples like here with the Starbucks logo and then making these shirts and different product mockups. So a whole lot of fun to be had by playing around with this. And again, we also generated this perfume bottle image by using that same method. So if you guys are curious where to get that, just check out the links down below. We're going to have links to that Comfy UI workflow as well. And the best part is that it is also completely for free. It's up on our Patreon. You guys don't have to pay any money in order to get access to this. Now, if you guys were curious to check out some of our more advanced workflows, we do have those for our supporters. And if you guys also wanted to contribute into determining some of the stuff that we work on, we also have bi-weekly polls. So that's even how one of these ended up coming to be. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy checking this out. And I hope you guys enjoy creating awesome videos using frame pack as a heads up this is completely brand new so it's only going to get better from here already just checking out the pull requests we can see some pretty awesome implementations for laura's support some other people adding queuing and prompt saving mac compatibility and the list just goes on and on so we're going to be covering it here if this is your first time on the channel make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button ding that notification bell so you don't miss out on all the super awesome stuff that we got lined up for you Anyways, hope to catch you in the next one. Until next time, all right, peace.